I'm well into adulthood now, but even still I've rejected some of the more common signifiers of a well-adjusted adulthood, like owning a home. The reason why is because growing up, my home for many years was that in name only. So I decided never to settle down until I had something to settle into. A place of warmth, happiness, a place where someone would keep me close. And not just a big house with blank walls and empty, unnecessary rooms to flaunt how far my money could reach. Instead, I've paid the price in renting in hopes that when I find where I need to be, I'm prepared to leave everything and go there. Still, it can be risky and frightening. Yet when I felt this way, sometimes I would be reminded of someone who taught me that taking risks was sometimes the best way to find out the right answers. Take chances, make mistakes, get dusty. And when I remembered these words, Miss Frizzle's words, I felt better even excited to find out if the path I wanted to walk would lead me to where I needed to be, or at the very least, I'd learn how to walk it. Although most days, despite my prayers, I still feel like I'll always be one step short of arriving where I've desired to be for so long. When I'm troubled, sometimes the Magic School Bus and other shows and programs come to mind. Some that remind me to take action, to seek help, to trust, to refuse, to want something greater than anything I thought I could possess. But what's interesting about these shows is that they all came from a time in my life when I was still growing. These were programs that I watched as a child, and many of them were made for small children. And what's more is that it is a fairly regular phenomenon. Thousands of adults are now living lives based on the lessons they learned and dreams they had before they got their first job or got their first kiss, derived from the childhood TV shows that gave them strength or direction, sharing what they loved most about these programs with their children or the world. Which is precisely what makes Looking for Magical Doremi such an interesting film. A film that follows now grown women looking back at Magical Doremi, a children's program, and drawing from it to give them guidance. This is a film that breaks the fourth wall and personifies the nostalgia of the lover of childhood animation in a way that is unique and nuanced, in a show that actually existed. To see what lessons can be learned from childhood shows and what is behind this phenomenon, of why, as adults, we find it necessary to revisit them. Looking for Magical Doremi follows Sora, Reika, and Mire, who have a chance encounter at the site of the Magical Doremi show that they all watched as small kids. We quickly learn that they're all having hard times in life and are looking to Doremi to cheer them up. We follow them learning respectively one struggles with a boyfriend that takes advantage of her money, Another fails to help a student as a teacher trainee, and another is sidelined at her corporate job. We quickly find that beyond the comfort that nostalgia brings, Sora, Reika, and Mire are looking to Magical Doremi for inspiration and guidance by taking on the hope, attitudes, and magic of the witchlings that inspired them when they were small. Because there is more to their present circumstances than it would appear. Behind Reka's inability to leave her boyfriend were issues related to her father, a father she loved but left her when she was a little girl. Reka finds him again after wishing on a special item, but learns that he had already started a new family and denies her. Yeah. <laughs> Sora's confliction about her inability to help a child, particularly one with a learning disability, reflects her own indecision about her life, what she wants her future to be, in a field of work that she was ushered into by her family. She cares for others, even teaching, but 
Will she have enough passion to direct her own path through life professionally, where she can excel, and even when she meets someone she likes? Mira, despite her wealth of experience, her fortitude, and her ability to speak her mind is finding it hard to put her money where her mouth is, to leave a job where she finds so much displeasure, to stand up for the values she champions in her personal life, in her professional life as well, when her job is sought after and highly valued. Each of the three displays a certain frailty of heart, so in response, they call upon the wisdom of the small witchlings that they loved most as children, Doremi, Aiko, and Hazuki. Reiko wishes for the love of her father, so she draws things that remind her of him into her life without thinking of what she truly wants or is best for her. So in times of doubt, she thinks of Aiko, the passionate, fun-loving one of the witchlings. Aiko had her parents split up as well, so she's always looked to Aiko to be lively, practical, and hopeful, even when her heart is full of sorrow, even to leave a boyfriend that isn't good for her. Sora's indecision turns her to Doremi, a witchling that, like her, can be self-loathing, as she struggles to find things that she can do well on her own. Yet, like Doremi again, Sora has a huge heart and wants to help others, she looks to Doremi to be more impulsive and determined in her life, to find solutions for others and even for herself, even if that daringness makes her the unluckiest pretty girl in the whole world. Mire has had an intrepid life and is strong-willed, often blurting out what she thinks and feels without thinking. But when it comes to her professional life, she learns to dim her own light before people with more authority than her, when she sees corruption in her own company, instead being cautious and careful. She turns to Hazuki, someone who is careful and cautious by nature, but will go to any length to help others, and becomes combative when faced with any injustices. And for all their effort, they were able to make a change. Reika left her boyfriend and nurtured her own passion in painting, a remnant left from her father, accepting that he wouldn't return to her life. Sora decided her new dream would be to start her own school for children who need help like the boy she struggled with. For all this passion she learned, she even tried her hand at confessing her feelings for someone. And, in spectacular fashion, Mire quit her job venturing then to start her own business in fair trade. So in many ways it can be said that we return to these childhood programs to gain insight and inspiration. To learn from people, characters whose intentions and emotions are pure and are unmasked by the complexity of adult life. And perhaps we go to them to find others who follow the same star. People we can grow with, practice living and making amends with, and even having the potential to fall in love. What the main characters were able to obtain in this movie is in no way supernatural, yet it is still remarkable in that, as adults, we learn many things, but the arc of that learning is much longer than when you're a child. As adults, responsibility keeps us from taking chances or even challenging ourselves, because for many, most of our thought is spent focused on things of higher priority, so we don't assess if we're happy, or satisfied, or even okay. Yet the garden that is early childhood is full of learning. And chances. When you cry first learning that the stove can burn, you are able to practice that new knowledge the following day at breakfast. When you scrape your knee, you learn that a kiss can make it better. So when someone you care about is hurt, you are able to practice that wisdom, unencumbered by the pride or sense of sensibility that comes with adulthood. So we revisit our childhood programs to remember what it was like to learn and apply. When the lessons you learned were about courage, empathy, fairness, and goodness. And like the folktales you tend to learn at this age, to see characters who make mistakes and then learn from them, who distill their experiences into aphorismic phrases or proverbs that help you make friends, solve problems, or grow. Like love, that can heal a multitude of hurts and harms, or like taking chances, 
making mistakes, and getting messy. Growing up brings a lot of challenges no matter what age you are because life is perpetually in flux. Gratefully, we have stories and animated shows that allow us to learn new lessons that we can take with us along the way. No, I will never ever turn my back on I'm people who need everything too. <gasps> you want to live! Yet as we get older, and our problems become more complex, it is a happy irony that often when it comes to who we are and what we choose to do, the simplest of solutions are needed. Solutions we learned when we were very young, often in front of the television, in the characters of our favorite childhood shows. <laughs> 